Thank you for tuning in to the Helping You Get There live Q&A series brought to you by Louisiana FCU. Helping You Get There brings the experts to you for a unique outreach associate here at Louisiana FCU. And joining us live today, we have our special guest, John Lanza. John is on a mission to help families raise money smart, money empower kids so they can live happier, more fulfilled lives. John is the chief mammal of the Money Mammals and author of the new book for parents, The Art of Allowance, a short practical guide to raising money smart, money empowered kids. John created the Money Mammals DVD and has written three children's books to help kids learn to share and save and spend smart. Money Mammals and everything they do have been featured in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the LA Times. John, without further ado, I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Chrissy. I'm uh, very excited to be here, and uh, I really appreciate you know yours and Louisiana Federal's commitment to uh, helping parents raise money smart kids because we've been working you with you for you know, close to a decade, and I'm excited to be here talking to parents and members and answering questions and because I, I always end up learning myself, so I'm ready to get started. Well, I'm so excited and we're, we're again happy. I read your book. It was a great book. I do not have children, but I recommend this book to any of my friends that have kids in their lives or, you know, have have children that they want to invest in. This is a great tool, a great book, The Art of Allowance. The title says it all. It's, you know, to each individual own their family, you know, it's going to look different for everybody. So this, this is a great book and I'm excited. I'm holding this book because I'm excited to share that we will actually be given a copy of your book away today. So I want to tell our viewers that may be watching to please submit your questions and we'll pull a name at the end of this and hope, hope that you win. So I'm excited about this. So we'll get to give away a copy of your book. So Great. let's Thank go ahead. You. I got some questions here that our members submitted and I want to get started. And our first one is from Aaron. And her question is, at what age should I start letting my children handle money? It's a great question, Aaron. It is not an uncommon one. And the way that I like to think about this is you really want to start very early because kids become aware of money from a very young age. I mean, even a one-year-old or a two-year-old, and some parents will say one or two-year-olds. Well, the way to think about this is the same way that we think about reading to our kids. So we all now pretty much read to our kids because we know that we're providing the foundation, the building blocks for literacy, reading and writing down the road. They're not going to understand everything that we're reading to them at first. Just like when they become aware of money, we want to open up a lifelong conversation, start that lifelong conversation with them, and we're introducing them to the language of money. It's a very similar concept because we want them to be prepared to be literate when it comes to money as they get older. So we want to be prepared to, to have that conversation. One easy way to get started is, you know, when your kid is two or three years old and you go into the store, you know, give them a dollar or two, let them buy something, collect the change. It's not about getting the change right. It's about learning that language of money, getting some kind of familiarity with it and making sure that you're always open to the conversation about money with them because ultimately we're trying to kind of break down taboos about talking about money. I like so hopefully that. that helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's not about the counting. Like you said, it's just about teaching them and, you know, learning at a small age so that they get used to the idea of, you know, what, the, what is all this about, you know, the money yeah. and how to and, do it. And, and and once they start to have some kind of mathematical ability, right. you know, when they're say five and you, you know, five is a good time to start an allowance, then you can start introducing them to the, the counting and getting the change right and all of that. And they're going to have their own money as part of their, their little program. But uh, in the beginning, it's really just about uh, starting that conversation and, and introducing them to the language of money, which is not only the, the language, the spoken language, it's the physical language of money too. Exactly. That's good. Okay. Our next question is from Miss Aura. And the question is, how can I set my child up for a good future? <laughs> Aura is asking <laughs> the big <open> question. questions. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. You got well, this, John. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll answer this from a, a monetary perspective. So 
when I teach my course on allowance for parents and how to kind of get things started, um, one of the things I talk about is this concept called the age of self-sufficiency. I feel like that's what we're living in now. And what that means is that today, you know, the, the kind of defined benefit programs that existed for our parents and grandparents, you no know, pensions, stuff like that, less than 1% of kids today are going to have something like that. So they need to be self-sufficient. They need to prepare themselves to be money smart from the get-go because they are going to be the ones who are the stewards of their own retirement down the road. And that starts with money smarts from a very early age. And that's why that's why I think this is so important, and I'm glad you're asking this question. Uh, and I'm assuming, Aura, that you're asking this question from a mon monetary perspective. And this gets back to that original, that first question, which is: we want to open up the conversation with them from the beginning, and then we want to start an allowance with them. And the whole purpose behind an allowance is teaching them to become responsible with money and then learning some key money smart skills. And I'll give you like three basic money smart skills to start with, and they are. Um, setting uh, setting goals, they are distinguishing between needs and wants, and then making smart money choices. And when it comes to choices, it's really important that our kids and we, frankly, understand that every time we receive money, we're making a choice. Whether we're making a conscious choice or not is really the question. So when we receive money, are we going to put it in our wallet to spend? Are we going to put it in our save jar to save? Are we going to share that with someone else like charitable giving? So we are always making choices. The more conscious we can be about those choices and hopefully the smarter we can be about those choices or our kids can be about those choices, the better. And I think that sets them up for um, hopefully in the future. That's what we're supposed to do is to, to raise kids who do a little bit better than we do or have done. That's good. And I do like you mentioned your share jar and I know you have the spin jar and the save spin share. So I would, you know, if you want to elaborate a little bit more about your jar system, you know, and I laugh because in your book, you mentioned, um, the piggy bank versus the piggy bank. And <laughs> I know you have pigs, you know, and as one of your characters in the, in the money mammals, you know, program. Yeah. So I know you don't have anything against the of miss pigs, but <laughs> elaborate a little <laughs> more on the money jar. Why it works. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> I, I'm glad you asked Chrissy. Cause yeah, we're kind of, we're, we're touching on these things, but let's, 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 uh, let's clarify it. So, yeah, we, we do. We have pigs. The bank is one of the characters in the in the money mammals. So the, and and so I have there's a fondness that I do have uh, for 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 piggy banks. But the, the only problem with a piggy bank is that a lot of them are they're tough to get money out of. And what you want, and Pigs does this too, even though he is a piggy bank, he has his own set of clear jars. So when you set up an allowance, and let's talk about what this would look like for a five-year-old. And don't worry if, you, if your kid's seven or eight or nine, you can start at seven, eight or nine. But for a five-year-old, you start with $5 a week. That's a good starting point. Okay. Um, now, the reason I call it the art of allowance is you have some play in there, but five is a good way to good place to start. So a dollar per week per age of the child. So six for a six year old, seven for seven, and consider this the starter allowance. And then you set up the three jars. Okay. So this is introducing them to the idea of choices right from the get go. So we have our share jar, which is for charitable giving. So stuff that you're going to donate. Uh, then you have the save jar and you're teaching them about paying themselves first. So that money that goes in the save jar is really only for goals, uh, longer term goals. And then you have the spend smart jar. And that's where you put the discretionary money. So the good way to start, you put $1 in the save jar, you put $1 in the share jar, and then you put $3 into the spend smart jar. Now the spend smart jar is now their money. That's discretionary money. They can spend any, now when you go to the store, they have that money, they can spend it. And the great part about this system is that now when you go to the store, they have their own money. At some point they're going to say, you know, I, I want a pack of gum, let's just say, and they can get it because it's within the $3 that they brought to the store that's in their spend smart jar. They you know put it in their wallet and they bring it to the store. But at some point, they're going to go to the store and they're going to say, I want you know, whatever it is, let's just say it's some kind of, you know, my unicorn play set or a <laughs> scooter, whatever it might be. And you're going to say to them, 
well, do you have enough money? And they're going to say, well, I have three dollars, and they're and you're going to and you're going to look at the price, and this is all part of the process. You say, well, that scooter is twenty four dollars, so you don't have enough money. But guess what? When we go home, we can set a goal, paste a picture of it on the jar, and you can set you can save towards that goal. So it kind of happens naturally in the process. But that's how you set up a basic allowance. You give that weekly, and it's. You want to you want to emphasize to your son or daughter that the point of the allowance is that you are helping them to become money smart, to learn how to use money as a tool, because ultimately that's where we're trying to go. We were trying to get to this point where we're money empowered, and that's where we have control over money. Money does not have control over us because all it is is a tool that we can use to craft whatever lives we uh, want to have. And I love how when you said, you know, putting the picture on the jar, you know, so that they have that visual of that scooter or in maybe your case, I know in your book, you mentioned the American Girl doll that your daughter did <laughs> <laughs> and then later found out maybe she didn't really want it after all. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But uh, that's a good lesson learned. Right. But I love sure. the visual on the jar. I think that's that's a great great tool. And I, and I love that. I think, um, I wish I had that. I think that would have been great, you know, um, when I was growing up and wish I had some of those, you know, little jars lined up so that I could have, you know, had a better understanding of, you know, what each, you know, jar does and, and how it works. So I think this is a great, this is a great tool, great book. I want to remind our viewers, if you're watching, please submit those questions for John, because you could win a copy of this book today. So don't forget to submit questions um, that you may have burning. So ask John. All right. Hey, Chrissy, I, I do. I want to uh, jump, uh, sure. just piggyback off of what you said, um, <laughs> which is that, you know, the nice part about the goal setting that you set up through uh, a, a money smart pro is that you're each introducing to this idea of goal setting, which is just a life skill. Right. And that's that's something that comes up time and time again, is that these these are skills that go beyond money smart learning, but they're really easily taught in this er in this arena because at some point there's going to be something that your kid wants that they don't have the money for and they can learn to set a goal. That's great. That's good. That's great. Great lessons, great tools for the kids to learn. All right. Let's see. We have a ne our next question. Now, this um, is from Matt. And Matt is asking, what is the best avenue for investing money for my children opposed to just having it in their savings account? So if they already have maybe a savings account, but they want to invest and do something else, what, what are some suggestions if you have any suggestions for us on that? Yeah. I mean, there are lots of different ways. And what's interesting about investing is that this will come up at all different ages. So I'll give you an example of, so my daughter first asked about wanting to invest in some stock. I think she was around 13, something like that. And what we did is we just, uh, we, we had her buy stock through the account that we had. So if you had her own brokerage account, just have it, have her buy through that. And uh, she bought three shares and the way that we did it, this is not now I do want to say that. So I am not a fiduciary, right? And I'm not, I'm not also not a financial advisor. So any of the advice that I'm giving you always, particularly if you're talking about investing, want to talk to a financial professional. So I had to give that disclaimer, but what we did, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what we did is uh, just bought, she wanted to get three shares of, of this particular stock. In this case, it was uh, Adidas and I'm not making it, we'd, you know, we'd get nothing out of that. The reason was she's a soccer player yeah. and she bought what she knew. That is not necessarily good stock buying advice, right? So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not providing it as that. This was really about learning how to, how to go about uh, doing an investment. Now, here's the great part. So she buys it and uh, it, it goes up. And we were in a bull market. So pretty much anything you buy is going to go up. But it leads to conversations that are wonderful and that would be much diff more difficult to have if it weren't her money on the line. Because when it goes up, she immediately asks, well, can I sell it? <laughs> and then we have a conversation about short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains. Now, if I sat her down or if she were in school learning about short and long-term capital gains, that's a snooze fest. But when it has to do, you know, when, when it has to do with her money, she is all ears, right? Yeah. 
That's right. Um, we also then talked about, you know, the risk of holding it, you know, if you're going to mm -hmm. wait to, to wait longer than a year and then, you know, get to that point where you're paying long-term capital, capital gains uh, tax versus short-term capital gains. Uh, so we talk about risk. And so all these conversations come out of just being open to the conversation about investment. And it was a very simple approach. Like it was, you know, three shares or something. Um, but there are other options. So I, I interviewed um, a money expert, Brad Klontz on the podcast, and he his seven-year-old is already asking him wow. about money and investment. And there are different vehicles you can use. Um, so there are some that you can do fractional shares for kids. Um, so there's, there's a lot of opportunities. I would say just like the original uh, conversation, the original topic about when to talk to kids about money, same thing with investing. Just be prepared to talk about it. And the other thing is, you do not have to be an investing expert. I, and actually, that can be a feature because I told my kids, I'm like, I'm not an investing expert. You know, we have almost all of our funds in mutual funds, and that's because I don't want to spend the time researching individual stocks. You may want to. Right. But remember, understand that that's not an easy thing to do. Um, but I'm not going to let I'm not going to let any kind of uh, failures that I may have had it as an investor yeah. or limitations or approaches that I take keep me from having the conversation with her. And that's where I think parents. That's where I see parents be successful is when they understand that the mistakes that they made they can share with their kids. Um, and they don't let them get in the way of being the steward or the or the kind of guide in the in this money smart journey for their kids. That's good. And and the key yeah. in that I got from your book too is just start. <laughs> it you know yeah. start somewhere, <laughs> just, but just get started. You know, I mean, yeah. it, when you're getting into the it, you know talking to your child about investments, I mean that's that's pretty good stuff. If you're seven, you know, I'm like, wow. Okay. Um, I wish I had, <laughs> you know, these tools or someone to, you know, share this information. So at seven, I could, you know, say that, um, I'm investing, you know, how, how cool yeah, is well, that? Seven -year -old, uh, same thing here, Chrissy. It's like <laughs> oh, you know, the most I'm a little behind John, I'm a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all were, I mean, but this gets at the, this age of self-sufficiency. So the when I went to college, um, it was the first. This was like in the mid to late '80s, right? And yeah. so that we were the first generation of kids that were actively um, um, uh, re not recruited, but we were actively uh, targeted to get credit cards. Correct. And we weren't. Our parents. My dad was a banker, but he didn't know to, that we had to be told taught we had to we had to have credit cards explained to us right we didn't know that because we were the first generation of kids going into this kind of gauntlet of of uh of dangerous potentially dangerous money habits right and we weren't we also he also didn't necessarily know that we weren't going to have these kind of you know backups like pensions and, um, you know, we would be responsible for our own things like uh, saving in our own IRAs, uh, having a, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, some kind of investment vehicle, whether it's a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA, you know, we would have to be the ones that are, um, taking care of this for ourselves. So that is why this conversation, starting this conversation early is so important because, because we're living in this age of self-sufficiency, we have to, we have to get started early. And to your point, Chrissy, it's like, be prepared and get that conversation going sooner than later. And don't, don't and understand that the conversation and their money behaviors are going to kind of go up and down. It's not like, it's not like the, it's not a, it's, it doesn't work like a, uh, you know, just a, a normal kind of straight line curve where it's, you know, bad behaviors to good behaviors. It's, you know, good things happen, then they make a mistake, then something is better, then they make a mistake. You know, it goes up and down, it fluctuates um, as time goes. But as they get older, they, they, they have a context for understanding money because you're, you have an open conversation about it and they learn from their own experience because the, the beauty of an allowance is that you're giving them money. That's their own money that then mm -hmm. they can use and learn from and make mistakes from And How do we all learn by making mistakes? That's I see good. some questions coming through here. I do. I do. I have some questions. So let's start with Angel. Uh, Weber Prey. Let's see. The question is, what is the best program to save for college? Do you have any suggestions for that? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave that specific question. That would really be something for a, a financial advisor. And I know like at Louisiana Federal, you know, you have people that would answer that question okay. more effectively. I mean, you know, we yeah. invested in a 529. We don't need to go into the specific specifics of what type of 529. Um, and a 529 program is just a, a vehicle where you save for college um, in the, the 529 program, and then you take that money out. And as long as it's used for um, investment per, for uh, education purposes, then it's not taxed. And um, so, so yeah, that that is definitely a question for a financial advisor. Okay, good. And you know, again, go back to you know what we said. Just start early. <laughs> exactly. Start early. Um, and then we have a question from Monty. What age would you suggest transitioning from the jar? to an actual credit union account? That's a good question, Monty. That's a, yeah, that's a fantastic question, Monty. So there's, um, so getting to the first thing I'll say is this is as the art of allowance recognizes that every kid, every parent, every kid within a family is different. So there's a range and roughly you're probably going to be somewhere in the kind of 10 years old to 13 years old where you do that transition, right? Well, first of all, it isn't necessarily a transition. So they, you should have that credit union account, the savings account set up earlier. Like, so when you set up the allowance, they can have that save jar and some of that money doesn't have to just go to the goal, go to a goal. That money can go to your, um, to your credit union, uh, uh, share account. Um, the other, so, so that's, that's one thing. And then the other thing you can do with that credit union account is when you get, uh, money from parents, whether it's a birthday money, especially for younger kids, you may break that up. So if they get like a, a $10 check, you know, five might go to them and five might go to their account. You know, that that's something you decide on a uh, family basis, but the transition then to a debit card or uh, well, a debit card um, would be, it, it would be uh, in that in that time. So you know, it depends. I'm not sure what Louisiana federal offers in terms of debit card, uh, but for us, you know, it happened in that kind of 10 to 13 year old um, age where they go from physical jars then right. to digital jars. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. That's good. So get yeah. started early, like you said, and we do offer the money, you know, mammals, um, accounts, youth accounts, and you can go on our website, you know, and look at um, all that information. We have the money mammals and the elements of money for the younger kids. So there, there's two different, the elements of money, I think, is for the older children. And then the uh, money mammals is for the youth, more the younger age group, but it's never too early, like you said, to get started. So, but they can definitely, you know, find that out, go on our website um, and find more information on that if they're interested. So um, we do have another question. Let's see, Missy asking, what's a good technique to teach a, teach a tweenager, <laughs> so <laughs> that, that tween age stage, a uh, 12 year old on saving and spending his own money? Or what's a good way to explain it better for him to completely understand? If, she says, if he's good at saving, very tight, but he says, thinks I'm taking his money when I put it into his personal savings account because it's not in his wallet and he can't see it. <laughs> yeah, That's a yeah, great yeah. question. Lucy. Thank you. Yeah, that is a great question. And, mm -hmm. and it's a, that's a, it's a great perspective because uh, this gets at, you know, the old paradigm for money was that if you're going to give some kind of allowance, you'd, you'd want, you want to be saving for a rainy day, right? So uh, rainy day, which is way too abstract for a kid. And all the kid is going to think is you're taking my money away from me. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is you want to give them, you want your kids to have as much autonomy as possible. And, but within the constraints of your system. So let's just say that you had a nine-year-old and now they're getting $9 a week. And you're saying that they get, maybe, maybe they're putting one, uh, $2 into save, $1 into share and $6 in their smart car. Right. So they have control over all that money. The only control over this, the only thing about the save is that save has to go to either that has to be deposited into, into their account or used for a goal. The share money has to be, um, shared, uh, used as uh, given to charity. And then the discretionary money, they can do whatever they want with. Now, the nice part, it sounds like for you, Missy, is that he's probably going to want to take some of that discretionary money and put it into his save jar. Right. And what I would say about this personal savings is it's his money. Um, so he's, he, he's going to put that in there in order to, you know, get, 
get some kind of growth in that with that money. So there's two things. One, with that money, it's it's his. So if he decides that he has a goal that he wants to save for, he can use that just like his save jar right? But he has to identify what that goal is. And so instead of necessarily putting the goal on the jar, you could put the goal on the wall. But I would say you, you keep the same parameters there um, so that so that he that that money is serves the same purpose, but is his money. It's really important that it is his money. Now, you may also have a separate account that you are saving up that you're keeping for for something else. You know, you some some parents will have a separate account that they keep for college for their kids, but that's a that's different and separate from an allowance account because the allowance account and the allowance money is really intended to be their money. And so I think you can address this point directly by saying it is your money, but there are constraints and the constraint is you can't just take that money and spend it willy-nilly. It has to be goal directed. Um so let me know Missy if that made sense and if you want any clarity on that that was great that was a great answer and um i, I think like you said you know it's it's their money <laughs> like you said if, if they're you know it's their allowance and and we're trying to get them engaged into you know spending it wisely or sharing it you know wisely or saving it wisely um but i like that how it's it's theirs to to be able to learn and and do <laughs> yeah, one other point, Chrissy, and um, maybe Aaron, who's um, on, who's uh, who's joining us here too, can also put the link here. But we have a thing, so we, we have the starter allowance, which goes up to about you know ten or eleven. Then we have a thing called the breakthrough allowance. Right. So um, I want to make one. The first point is that remember the allowance is for them to learn. It's a learning tool. So they're going to make mistakes with that money and hopefully they make less mistakes as they get older. But then you transition from the starter to what we call the breakthrough allowance. So now they get an allowance, not on a weekly basis, but a monthly basis. And they're going to get more allowance and it's going to fluctuate based on you know, your family, your family budget. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll get the link in here to this on the Louisiana FCU site to the breakthrough allowance because you can um, you can see we actually have there's a, a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet that you can use. You can copy and paste it and create your own for this. But what happens is now they have a lot more responsibility. They'll get more money, but they have more responsibility. So and, and you can set up your categories however you want. But the way that they're currently set up is, you know, any any additional charges for the phone, they have to pay for those. They have to pay for all food out with friends. So like if they're going for a coffee, they're paying for that. They have to pay for gifts for their friends and they pay for their own clothes. So they're going to have more money. But guess what? Now they are in control of it. And the other really nice part about this is it's going to seem like, a, you know, and again, not every, every, every family is going to do this differently. You're going to give them a larger lump sum, but this is now you're training them to what, to, to, to what life is going to be like once they have a paycheck because they have to deal with it now and it's going to dissipate over the month. And guess what usually happens? They blow through it the first time, right? Because you're giving them the money that they need to allocate to all these different things. But it right. usually takes one or two months, maybe sometimes three months, for them to figure that out. And then they just have to kind of weather <laughs> the last few weeks if they've blown through their money. But that's a lesson learned. So that's the advantage of the breakthrough allowance. So it's more responsibility. The money comes less frequently, so they have to kind of budget it better, um, but it's kind of moving them to the next stage. And then you can usually tie that back into the um, uh, to having the digital allowance now, so not just the jars. Um, and you can keep the jars going too if you want, or you know if you use envelopes, you can do those too. But we're 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 partial to jars because clear jars are a metaphor for the open conversation that you want to have with your kids about money. That's good. I see uh, Missy, uh, separate savings account. Excellent. Okay. I'm glad that helped. And they, and did, the they added the links. Yes. Well. I see. Yes. <laughs> so we have the link there. So you can grab, you can grab both the starter allowance contract and the breakthrough allowance, uh, a document that'll walk you through everything you need to know to go from, you know, five years old to when they head off to college. <laughs>
<laughs> these are some these are great great questions and and responses, John. So we appreciate your your expert advice and and tips. And like I said, I know that anyone the lucky winner obviously is going to be excited to get your book because you go in a lot more um, of details of how someone can get the the three jar system started and what it looks like. And I, I'm excited. So we actually um, I have the the hat so to speak. So I'm going to draw from from the jar or the bucket. I could say jar. <laughs> Let's see. All right. In the jar lucky, sounds good. Yeah. The lucky winner. Let's see. We have is Erin. So Erin, congratulations. Um, I think she was one of our members that submitted early on questions. So we're excited that Erin um, is our winner. So yay. Congratulations. Congrats, Aaron. Yeah. Happy of the book. So we'll get that to you. Um, I don't know if uh, yeah, if you want to answer another question before we before we say um, farewell. <laughs> I'll stay on as long as you want me to answer questions. I love doing this. <laughs> we have um, another good question that um, I wanted to, you know, because you talked about the, you know, the um, the allowance and the giving and what that looks like. So I know some parents do tie it to chores. So the question kind of goes, you know, it's what are some of the myths about giving an allowance? Is it a handout? Should it be tied to chores? And how much money should a parent give? I know it's kind of a loaded, but just if you can tell us a little bit about your thoughts on that. <laughs> sure. I, 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 the reason that I emphasize the purpose of an allowance is that it is a tool to help our kids get money smart, is that that eliminates the issue of allowance being thought of as a handout, because if it doesn't have a purpose, if it doesn't have a why, then it is uh, a handout, right? So uh, that's, that's a really important point. So allowance has a purpose. The purpose is to teach kids to learn to make smart money choices, set and save for goals, distinguish, distinguish between needs versus wants. And those are the three kind of core money smart skills that we talk about in the book. But that's purpose. now for serve a a different purpose. And it's a very important purpose. And that is very often in order to earn money, to get money, we need to work to get that money, right? So that that is the purpose of a chore. And you don't necessarily have to tie an allowance to a chore. So we don't. We don't tie our allowance to chores. Um, and the main there's a, there's a few reasons. So one is that allowance does have a purpose. And one, and the other is most of these chores that we want our kids to do, they should do because they are you know, living in the house, whether it's, you know, setting the table, whether it is making their beds or keeping their rooms clean. Those are chores that they just do as being part of the house. Because here's the thing, when they get, say they're 15 or 16 and they're making money now, they yes. can't opt out of that chore because right. <laughs> you're not going to, you know, you're going to be like, no, you're still making your bed until you're, you're, you're out of here. Right. That's so, right. so you're kind of presenting them a false choice if you're paying them and then not paying them. Um, the other, yeah. So the other thing is that, that, and this is not the reason to, to pull the two apart to decouple as I like to say, decouple chores and allowance. But the, the problem is that kids don't like to do chores. At least a lot of kids don't like to do chores. And so if they're not doing the chores yeah. and then they're, then, then, then the money side of things, the allowance becomes punitive. In other words, you didn't do that chore, so I'm not right. paying this money. And now there's a cloud that starts to hang over our conversation about money because people are, you know, kids are getting angry because they're not getting paid. You're upset because the chores aren't done. So why, like, let's just separate those two. So we, we know we're going to have some conflict there. So let's not have that conflict, right? So that's, it's just a bonus of, of decoupling the two. But the primary reason is that chores serve a different purpose. Now, the mm -hmm. chores, the purpose of chores to teach kids that takes a little bit of work in order to, or, you know, mm -hmm. could be a lot of work in order to earn money, you can give them chores that you might pay someone else for, or that you might right. do yourself washing the car, doing the lawn, or mowing the lawn, uh, shoveling snow, not here in Los Angeles, but it's, you know, the thing that uh, <laughs> the people do. Um, so those are, uh, we call them above and beyond chores right. and they, you can pay them for this. And then they're learning that work right. is required in order to make money. So hopefully that helps uh, give you some perspective, but I do want to make right. one final point on this is sure. some people can't get over the, like if, if it really <laughs> bugs you, 
to that to to provide an allowance without it being tied to chores. It's more important that you provide an allowance and let them learn from that than it is that you decouple chores and chores and allowance. Because there are plenty of people that decide, you know what, I'm just not comfortable with it. I'm going to I, I want to tie my chores to allowance. And there there are plenty of people who are money experts in that area. So yeah. it's not that this is the only way to do it. That's just my pitch for the way to think about it. And then you can decide on your own. And that's a great way to close, John, because I think it the book title itself, The Art of Allowance, it's going to be different for each family. And like you mentioned before, the key is just to get started. So thank you so much for joining us today. This has been great. Um, we would love to have you back, I'm sure, in the future so we can get some more questions uh, asked that maybe um, didn't get asked today so or answered today. So thank you, John. I appreciate you for joining us and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Chrissy. We'd love to come back. Great. <laughs> have a good day. You too.